Hey, this is Deepak here from digitaldeepak.com and today I am doing a podcast with Jayanth and we are going to talk about how to quit your job and start your business. So, hey Jayanth, welcome to the podcast. Hi Riddhi, what is up? What's up? So, Jayanth, today let's talk about how somebody can quit their job and, you know, start a business. A lot of people want to do that because they are tired of 9 to 5 and there is always this dream of owning your own business. So let's start talking about uh, how did your dream play out? You have always wanted to do business, but you started with a bunch of jobs. Yeah. How did those jobs help you in gain experience and how has been the journey? Yeah. So, I mean, when you want to start a business, you need money first, right? So what I did personally was to get to a place of financial stability. I won't say independence, rather stability that where my family's uh, needs were met. And then I thought about, okay, now I have this extra money. This is my capital for starting the business. Mm. And to be honest, like if you can see that on the screen, we have two kinds yeah. of businesses out there, which is like having a product or having a service. Mm. The first ever business that I started mm. was actually a service business because I was doing something, a digital marketing for a company, and I felt I can replicate this thing across mm. multiple verticals. Mm. Let's try that out. Mm. Mm. And that's kind of sort of how things started with service and freelancing. And I did try some mm. products here and there. Mm. Mm. But that's pretty much how it started. I got to a position of stability first where I could say that, okay, now family, if even if I do something on the side with the mm. extra bit of money mm. that I save, uh, that doesn't hamper how I survive. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. What was your journey in that way? Yeah. So I started out uh, creating a motorcycle blog and scaling it. Mm. And the business scaled to $2,000 to $3,000 a month maximum in revenue. But I obviously did a lot of mistakes in my first business. And I would not really call it a business because it was more of a hobby. Mm. And I was living with my parents and I did not have any overheads or expenses. Even the internet connection cost was paid by my dad. And there was <laughs> okay. no rent cost or there was no family to... profit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was no family to take care of. So the idea was that whatever money I kept making in the business, I kept reinvesting to grow the business. So 2008 I started. By 2011 I had uh, around a million page views a month come to my blog. And it gave me the initial experience, but then I figured out that I need to gain more work experience. Mm. A lot of people think that they can do undergraduation, then they can do MBA and they can start a business, <laughs> right? First of all, in MBA itself, yeah. if 500 people join an MBA uh, course, then almost 80% of them always end up getting a job because now they have management jobs as an option. Yeah. 10% probably uh, decide to do something else with their life and only 10% actually try to start a startup and that is more like colleges have incubators and everything and even from these incubators there are not really many successful startups that come out of it. So I have seen that almost in all the cases the most successful, successful startups have been started by people who had some level of work experience. Mm. So that is why I decided to get work experience. 2012, I came to Bangalore and I have worked in five different startups like Razorpay, Instamojo, Practo, Exotel. And while working in all these startups, I ended up gaining experience. And that, that makes sense, right? Yes. I mean, uh, I've seen people who quit their job and then they will start a business. Uh, I don't know the logic that they mentioned. I mean, for some people, it does yes. work out. I wouldn't say it's a bad move in general. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Because how are you going to take care of your family if you yeah. are focused on building a business in which yeah. you may not see ROI for the yeah. first six months or yeah. a year? Right. So the most logical step uh -huh. would be probably doing a job, yes. getting experience. Yes. And you also build connections in the industry, right? Yeah. Right now you have yeah. Yeah, direct exactly. contacts with Shashank, Razor yeah. Pega founder. Yes. Yes. The, you will never and also hungry. you will observe and learn a lot from working in other businesses. Mm. And I would recommend people join startup businesses rather than joining like a very big company like let's say McKinsey or Deloitte. You would not have any idea about how they generate leads, how the sales team works, how they bring in the sales. You will be like very, very small cog in a very big machine. Yeah. You will not have any idea about business. If somebody just wants to do 9 to 5 for the rest of their life, I don't know if such people exist, but if somebody wants to do that, they can join a very big company. But most of my friends who work in uh, HCL, Infosys and very big companies are not necessarily gaining business skills even by working there mm. because they are taking care of a very, very small portion of the entire responsibility, you know, for serving a client. 
and they don't have any idea they are not capable of coming out and building a business themselves mm. but if you work in a startup then you interact with the founders you interact with the founding team you know sometimes you might even get to speak to the investors of the company you can speak to the customers and you can kind of observe how you know they run a startup and what kind of startup they run whether it's a product company service company how they how they get sales and also the self confidence that you have will increase a lot because yeah. you will see that most of the people are probably still confused a, and all over the place anyway i have a confession and a very uh. nice story there so i was this working at this e-commerce startup i won't name anything not even the product so they had like so many products okay and just primarily selling on amazon there was a shopify store sales are coming uh and when i work started working with them i realized okay this one product is doing well and i asked them to like hey you know what we can do some optimization do xyz it'll really work well they said they didn't work out on it mm. when i quit that company mm. because i had that insight okay this product for some reason mm. even with the horrible advertisement is selling really well mm. and i took that product started an e-commerce store made 10 lakhs per month <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that's right let the best man win there is yeah. nothing wrong in that uh but at the same time you know for people who think that you know they want to start a business uh and they don't have any job experience at all they did undergraduate post graduation and now they want to start a business for them i would advise as we can see here in the mind map that first get some work experience and get yeah. a job first right there is 100%. no negotiation there and that could be like you know 3 to 5 years they could work at different companies not necessarily to build a career and climb the corporate ladder but just to gain enough experience and that is what i did yeah and second thing most importantly is that by the time you have graduated from college or from your post graduation and then you work in a company for 3 to 5 years very less chances that you know apart from the smart people really smart people most of the people will have family obligations and they will get married and they have kids. <laughs> what do you mean by smart people <laughs> okay. smart people get married very late <laughs> so uh so for people uh you know who have family obligations and everything they will have monthly expenses mm. and the monthly expenses can be anywhere from 50000 to 1 lakh i would say at least 1 lakh if they are living in uh bangalore mumbai chennai or delhi yeah. uh, to live a pretty decent life and a healthy life uh, where you are not like sacrificing too much but if you want to sacrifice a lot and if you are really having that motivation to start a business you can even go to some outer areas or a tier 2 city and start the business there but either way let's say for survival right people need 50000 to 1 lakh per month in income mm. and what happens in a lot of cases is that uh, when people quit and they want to start a business they don't need to invest a lot of capital especially the kind of business that we talk about which is freelancing agency training doesn't coaching doesn't need a lot of capital doesn't need any investment but at the same time there needs to be a little bit of cash reserve so that you can pay yourself and like you know when a baby is born we don't expect the baby to start making money for like 18 to 20 years yeah, right yeah. how can you expect the business to start making money within the first few years it definitely not going to happen i mean it does but uh, then again yeah but it does i am saying that if it starts getting some traction and starts generating some revenue that revenue should be set aside to reinvest in the business and grow the business yeah and if you are withdrawing salary from that business right to start with whether you are like whatever thing that you are doing then uh you will have inconsistency in the beginning that's my that was one of the big reasons why mm. all my businesses failed and yeah. hopefully this doesn't go away is because uh, whatever money i came i treated mm. it as like a additional income as yes. opposed to like building a business solid mm. foundation like a startup how they look mm. at it mm. and whatever so, money came yeah. i used to like spend it all yeah. so that's what so what i would recommend people to do is that they should have at least 2 years of savings if your monthly expense is 1 lakh then save 24 lakhs mm. keep it aside not to invest in your business because you are investing time and energy into your business but that 24 lakh will keep you afloat for the next 2 years yeah and 2 years is more than enough time to start a business and make it work and eventually figure out like how is, you are going to actually make it is, yeah it's a risk capital because every month you are afraid whether your business will go up or go down and it will be inconsistent in the beginning and some months you could like you know people get into this feast or famine mode you know when there is a lot of money they will end up spending and feel like ha me ambani ban raha hu and then and then people will be like are my business is going to shut down 
and uh, probably I have to go back to a job. So with this level of anxiety, one cannot focus in the business and get the things done day in and day out. Yeah. Right. So for that, people should have savings at least one or two years. Uh, if you have a family, if you have expenses, if you have kids, I would expect like at least two years of savings. And if some person's like, you know, monthly expense is 1.5 lakh, then it would like, you know, just multiply it accordingly. So here, a small trick that I would tell people is that uh, whenever you have monthly, like whenever you have personal expenses, it's always monthly. Yeah. You have EMIs if you got into EMIs. Uh, you have monthly phone bill, monthly electricity bill, monthly rent, monthly groceries, you know, yeah. everything is monthly budgeted. So that is why a salary feels very addictive. Every month they give you like some money and it becomes very difficult to quit the job. Yeah. So one of the trick here is that uh, is to save in fixed deposits. And we are not trying to get returns here. We are trying to keep it as cash because mm. if you put it in real estate, it will get locked. You cannot sell the real estate whenever you want. Yeah. Right. So if people save in FTs, so let's say right now it is July and you are planning to quit your job by December. January, say you are starting your business. Mm. So put the FDs in such a way that you put one lakh FD so that it liquidates on Jan 1st. Then you so put from another. Now. Ah, from now. So every month you keep putting FDs? And, and keep saving it for two years. So each of your savings unit, FD unit, takes care of one month of your expenses. Oh. And you put the liquidation date on the first of every month. So you have another one lakh. You put, put the FD in such a way that it liquidates on February 1st. Mm. And then March 1st. So initially you might have three months of runway. And then you work in a job more, save more, then have six months of runway. And when you have one year of runway saved up, so let's say you decide to quit uh, in January, not in December. Hmm. So January may there will be one FD that is getting liquidated, but you feel like, Array, I should probably stay in the job a little bit more. And then if you have saved um, until May, let's say, so you take that January ka liquidated FD, put, it put as FD again and put it as June 1st. June 1st. Oh, so okay. what will happen is that you will have a feeling of an artificial salary effect. Yeah, and that, your expenses will uh, be taken that, care that, of. That you know that for the next two years, I will mm. keep getting this month every month. It will get created into my account because the FD gets liquidated and that will take care of all my expenses. Now you can remain calm and focus on your business and no matter what ups and downs you have in your business for two years, you will be able to manage it. Worst case, let's say two years you are struggling, working hard and not able to make it work. This two years of experience by running your own startup is more than enough to go ahead and get you a fresh job, probably at a higher salary. Higher salary, better position. And, and then you work for a few more years, save for another two years and get back and try to start something. Yeah. That would be the goal. Uh, that would be the way that people like, can get out of this rat race. Like first step is like save enough money to pay yourself so that whatever inconsistency happen in the business, you, you are still fed. You are yes. healthy yes. because you can't run a... They say, you know, like the reason why kings lived in palaces because if their mindset is, they are not healthy and they are not in a good mindset, they will not be able to run an entire country. And they cannot make the right decisions. Uh, that's why they call it, uh, uh, there is a, I was reading a book, it was called King's Audit. Okay. So here it, uh, the, the concept was like, you should treat your business as if you are treating a kingdom. Mm. And you audit where exactly money is going, where mm. it is coming out, how mm. the operations are taking mm. care of, while making sure that you are comfortable enough. So yeah. your comfort yeah. should be like the top yes. priority. Yes, of course. Everything else will fall in place. Yeah. So you use the job to build enough savings to keep yourself afloat and yeah. not significantly reduce your lifestyle expenses because you need to be fed well and kept nutrition and you need to sleep well, live in a good place to, to sit and focus on building a business, right? One big challenge that even I faced and we could we should talk about that it's uh, a lot of people think that okay you know what uh, now that i was in a job they figure try to figure out what business should i start uh, instead of looking at the simplest mean which is like whatever experience you have put it into a service but majority of the people they are like the loose track or the loose focus per se i think that is a very important point that we need to discuss about and i believe all my past businesses failed because I lost focus. Got it. Yes. Right. So what would be your advice against mm. people? Let's say you mm. are starting out and mm. you have been mm. in one single field for mm. an yeah. inordinate amount of time. Right. Yes. So how did you keep focus on one single business kept on doing, kept on doing it for like so long? So I have always kept my focus as digital marketing. Uh, when I was working in a job, my role was a digital marketing manager. And when I am like, you know, running a business, I'm either running a digital marketing agency or in my tech business, I'm going ahead and teaching people, you know, how to do digital marketing. 
so one thing that uh, you know helped me uh, you know understand this long back was that you should be known for one thing because mm. people will not give a business to you because you are a professional person people give business to you because you are known as an expert in a particular thing mm. so that is where the quote comes from where the best known will always beat, beat the, the best, best. right so that means that you have to keep your focus on a single field for a long enough period of time so that the compounded results of being having that focus starts giving a return but at the same time i did not even know that i was getting into the digital marketing niche until i did something whatever fell in my plate so 2008 when i uh, wanted to just make money using the internet i just learned that okay you can do blogging you can uh, put some ads on the blog and start making money from the ads is what i learned and i started doing that and to grow my blog i ended up learning seo email marketing social media marketing and everything and the term digital marketing itself was not established at that point in time mm. it was just going ahead and everybody was like you know talking about uh, internet marketing at that time yeah. so im was the word dm was not the word okay so what i would recommend people is that uh, once they get out of their job with the job they end up gaining some level of experience they cannot start a product company right away you know most of the product companies which started manufacturing a product or something uh, even while taking funding or investment uh, 99% of them have been wiped out yeah. because uh, they don't even know what the customers want so rather than starting a product people should start a service and they should start offering services to whoever they can and whoever they can sell to mm-hmm. which is on some level in the line of your, their job experience because Three to five years working in a job, they would understand what is their strength area. Yeah. So I understood that my strength area is digital marketing. So I started offering people digital marketing services through my agency, Pixel Track. And as I had enough experience working as a digital marketer and working for other companies, helping them with digital marketing, I was able to also sell digital marketing courses on the side and become a trainer or coach. So this mm. is how my journey from 2017 evolved. Until 2017, I was working in different jobs as a digital marketing manager. Mm. So that focus will eventually come. And once you get that focus and once you have strong belief in the future of that focus, like for me, I believe a lot in digital marketing. I literally named myself Digital Deepak. And that is a conviction that I have in the future of digital marketing. So people should go ahead and pick out an area but yes there is a risk that that area might not uh, be long lasting like you know people used to learn java c++ and all and those programming languages uh, there is not enough demand for that right now but uh, as long as you are doing marketing and sales for businesses every business needs marketing away. and sales and that is never going to go away mm. and if somebody does not know what is their niche i'm thinking like digital marketing and sales is still going to be a very good niche because uh the market is like very very big i cannot I mean, take all the possible to get good clients. marketing and sales persons yes anyways, right yes yeah that's there but you know what happens i'll tell you mm. uh at least it happened with me and i mm. see a lot of prospects that come mm. they same share the mm. same story which mm. is like i started this business mm. something did, did work mm. i was happy mm. then something didn't work i thought this business is going to die so i shut down this business started another mm. then shut down that business started another and that i i was meeting people who have like 10 different businesses running <laughs> together business magnets business magnets serial entrepreneurs <laughs> <laughs> serious serial entrepreneurs yeah one yeah. by one they fail in the business not necessarily have an exit or have a successful exit yeah but then th- that what is a good mm. i want to counter measure mm. because having that conviction is a very difficult thing yeah yeah how do you go about like build that see first of all i think uh, you know in most of the cases when people fail they don't go to the market in the right way and they mm. don't serve the right customers uh, people think that pricing is an advantage and if people people think that uh, you know if i sell my products and services for a low price then automatically people will come and buy that yeah. is one of the mindset that is almost like an epidemic among new entrepreneurs right yeah. so they think pricing is an ad- advantage and they end up selling something for a low price and because they are selling it for a low price they cannot keep themselves afloat or the team afloat or the business afloat and then they complain that people are not seeing the value in it mm. and also when you sell something um, you know it could be a service or it could be a training product to start with when pe- when you sell it for a low price then you also attract the wrong kind of customers because people who pay the bare minimum are very skeptical and they will demand the service out of you and they won't be happy no matter what service that you provide mm. also another problem why they target low prices is that they are not confident enough to price their own services 
very highly hmm. like lot of people come out and they become a website design freelancer and they charge 5000 rupees for a website yeah so who will uh, come for a 5000 rupee website businesses that are struggling who can't hmm. even afford to spend 50000 rupees for a website yeah if you sell website design services for 50000 then you are going to attract businesses which are already successful in what they are doing but they need someone else to build a good website for them Mm. you can provide a better service for them by designing a better website because they are getting paid more you can afford to get resources yes very interesting conversation happened with one of the alpha club members recently mm. and uh, we do this exercise of goal setting you know the week one wala thing where uh, i asked them what is your goal for this year it should be at least 10 cr mm. in a year so mm. that comes about 80 mm. lakhs a month mm. for their agency mm. and they were targeting startups so people who mm. want to start up and mm. they want a proper branding marketing thing and mm. the average lifetime value you can say or card value per month is like uh, 2 lakhs mm. for this agency mm. so achieving a dream of like 1 cr almost or 80 lakhs a month with serving 2 to 2 lakhs of client is too difficult like you yes. need 40 clients out of yes. this so we also started discussing about this so they had worked with listed companies big companies in the past mm. and the discussion happened this way which one would be easier mm. charging 8 lakhs mm. to 10 companies who are like top notch listed they need the same service that the startups mm. need mm. or just serving startups charging 2 mm. to 2 lakhs to each company and mm. see how, where it goes so and that's when we also got the clarity you know what forget about the beginners mm. what we should be completely working at mm. like we have done this in the past we have worked with big mm. clients mm. that just completely work with bigger clients yeah. and uh, get 10 clients that can pay us 8 yeah. lakhs each every single yeah. month and we make mm. we hit our goal and mm. finding 10 people that pay you 8 mm. 10 lakhs a month is mm. just so much more easier mm. as mm. compared to mm. yes finding all exactly. the startups here and there right yes yes and that completely comes to the confidence level that people have yeah. and they should improve their skills to that level like if they are doing website design they should learn how to do really good website design yeah. not knowing how to do good website design and having a low price is not a reason for you to go that way because ah. then you will fail ah, right? then you will fail yeah, the other skill yes. is important yes. like we have ahan ikbal right he is he is charging what like he does ui ux and complete thing he charges mm. some 15000 dollars mm. for yeah. a project oh wow is getting yes. one client a month yes. he is chill yes. Like. yes you just need one client a month that way so this is where i also like to discuss about this book called uh, the dip and uh, this particular book is written by seth godin and one of my favorite authors in the marketing space and he talks about the insane advantages that you have when you are the best in the industry mm. and um, let's say you know he gave an example where if he needs to get like a surgery then he will go to the best surgeon and he will probably pay the most even if the surgeon is not going to spend enough time to do his surgery let's say this surgeon does it in 1 hour versus some other surgeon who is charging you half but he will do it in 5 hours who, which surgeon will you go to you will go to the best surgeon because you don't want to take a risk yeah and especially in the world of a globalized economy where um, your competitors are just a few clicks away you are yeah. not like having the protection of the geography that mm-hmm. hey in this area i am the king you are like competing with anyone and everyone out there especially when you are running a digital agency it's very difficult and uh, this particular book talks about why you should only pursue things in which you can eventually become the best at mm. and if you figure out that in this particular path i cannot become the best in the world with this then you should quit so this book talks about when you should quit and when you should stick we should also talk about the size of the world as well right yes. i mean imagine if uh, mm. you have a local or a more local like jitendra mm. does from alpha mm. club is like he is a restaurant marketers mm. who helps launch and grow restaurants in mumbai yeah like no other person has done yes that. yes like, in certain categories yes there is a you know geographical protection as well that mm. hey i will you, uh, help all the restaurants in mumbai to get more customers via digital marketing that's his niche so a lot of people think that hey i will deliver all the services to all the Everyone, people in the world huh. you know that's why they start with and they think that going broad is probably a smart strategy because that will help you increase more revenue in the future but uh, you know if you think of all the industries that you can serve and all the services you can give and it's an intersection and it is on a grid you should start offering one specific service to one specific industry mm. and then you can offer multiple services to one, to one specific industry yeah. and that is how you scale mm. right that so that is like vertical scale yes i also want to talk about the job to business spectrum yeah 
and uh, you know when we think about the work that we do you know let's say let's say person x makes 1 lakh per month okay this person does not have any other assets he has skills he has upskilled himself now he is earning 1 lakh per month in a job and let's say this person x wants to make 1 lakh per month without doing anything mm-hmm. just by chilling yeah. okay what 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 does he need to do he probably needs 4 crore in savings yeah or let's say you know in real estate right so that um, you know you get passive income and rental income uh, he could have four flats worth 1 crore each um, each 1 crore flat will probably pay him like 25000 a month in rent mm. and here he can basically chill and do nothing and make 1 lakh per month so now his own value if we look at it if he is earning only 1 lakh a month his own value as a person itself is only 4 crores 4 crores right yeah. if you think about it that way let's say mm. you know even though this might never happen but as a thought experiment let's say i want to like you know buy a person and whatever he makes for the rest of his life i am going to take it <laughs> what will be the cost of this person oh damn i never <laughs> thought this way yeah so it yeah. will be only 4 crores right yes he can work hard upskill himself and maybe start like making 2 lakh a month but that mm. we will leave it but uh when you look at you know this particular thing so here when he is working in a job and making 1 lakh a month he has to work for the entire month you know probably for 22 23 days a week considering saturday sunday is holiday now if he wants to make the same uh without doing anything then he needs assets mm. he needs real estate assets and he needs capital to buy those assets yeah but even with something like real estate you know apart from let's say gold and bitcoin investment which is not completely cash flow generating they only increase in asset value real estate is cash flow generating apart from increasing in asset value but even with real estate there is a service component to it right it's not yeah. like completely you can like chill maintenance because stuff. you need to maintain the flat you need to you know find new tenants if one tenant is not vacating then you need to evict them so you need to have a you know legal work related so it's to not it not completely passive ah uh, Yeah it's not completely passive you you need to fix the you know toilets if the toilet breaks yeah, the painting uh, whatever you need to that. repaint it if one one tenant goes out then you need to you know repaint the house and everything mm. which means that there is some level of work involved here as well but it's a very very minimal amount of work yeah when you are in a job uh, there is really no asset that you have it's like you know completely just work, it, work. it's a 100% work. service 0% product here it is probably 95% product and you know 0 uh, 5% service service so now anybody who starts a business they can't really put it like black and white like hey this is a product company or this is a service company there will be a spectrum yeah. so if you are starting out as a freelancer right and if you have let's say four clients who will pay 25k per month then you are still making 1 lakh a month but the advantage here is that if one client stops paying you you are not going to completely get wiped out you can still pay your bills mm. if one client stops paying you you are still earning 75k a month yeah. and then you can use a little bit of time to get two more clients and you can you know increase this to five clients and you can start making 1.25 lakhs per month yeah now here you still might be providing a lot of work and lot of service this is still 100% service but still you are starting to build some assets and what are the assets you are building in this particular business so let's say we call this as a freelancing okay mm. you you start as a freelancer and if you put the math here this is the math and here you start building some assets it could be client results Huh. that that is an asset because you produce results for Case a client a little reason. bit in job also yes you have a good name with your previous job then you can get another job much easily so you have case studies client results you have sops now which is a SOPs. system and a process and now with this sop what you can do that let's say you are making 1 lakh a month with four clients now you got 5 lakhs uh, five clients making uh, 1.25 lakh a month you can start hiring which you cannot do while you are in a job yeah. even if you are making 4 lakh a month you cannot say ha- i will hire somebody i will pay 1 lakh a month and remaining 3 lakhs i will get it doesn't work like that yeah but now you are starting to go from the service end of the spectrum to the product end of the spectrum little bit making little bit inroads into it mm. and now you are hiring people and building a team and tomorrow you can like you know probably have let's say if you get to like eight clients mm. and make 2 lakh per month and here you have four people working for you each paying you know 25k per month 
then there is a chance that the amount of work that you need to do comes down to like 50 percent that 50 percent you have to do the work but rest of the 50 percent is an asset team is saying, yeah. which is your agency brand mm. which is the team which is the sops which is the existing client relations so you are slowly trying to move towards the product spectrum yeah so when you think about apple as a company we think of apple as a software and hardware company a lot of people think like apple as a hardware company but it is still significantly a software, software company. company and a service and component also but he ha they also have a service component yeah like if you buy a macbook pro so since i have bought all my apple devices i touch wood need not uh, have not found the necessity to go into uh, the service center to repair something or something but let's say 1% of like you know uh, let's say 100 people buy macbook pros and 1% of them have some problem that they have to take it to the service center yeah so if that 1% does not exist, the 99% of the people won't buy. Hey, mm. what if my Mac breaks, where will I go? I will go, yeah. So for the 1% for, you know, when it breaks, even they have to offer a service. So even Apple as a product company have not completely gone into 100% product. You cannot. And if you do, then you are basically selling a commodity. Yeah. You can sell. I mean, this is exactly what this, um, oh, what is that credit? Amex does concierge. BMW yes. has a concierge service. Yes. If you are yes. late, they will book a flight or something. Yes. So now you are trying to leverage the labor with the systems, with the brand, with the product and with the uh, SOPs that you have. Mm. But you can keep reducing the service service component by productizing your service but service component is never going away mm. and you can start with a hundred percent service and slowly try to reduce the service component and Make become a product and that is how you build a very profitable business which becomes an asset for you to either sell the entire business and have a huge exit or basically depend on the business for progressively in increasing your income in the future yeah and uh, this I mean, is one a more layer we can add to agency business let's say you are full with done for you clients and you want to start consulting as well are the same SOPs that you're building. Yes. You're just advising people to deploy these SOPs yes. themselves. Yes. And uh, that's how you add more channels of revenue where you have very less service component and more of a product or SOP systems, whatever you've built. And, uh, and then people. we have to also talk about uh, the leverage points that people have, right? So what are the leverage points when you are trying to build a business? The old type of leverage is time leverage that mm. you are there in the business for a long time. So you have some advantages, better knowledge about the market, better brand. Uh, you have the labor leverage. So if you have more people working for you, then you can possibly scale. You have capital leverage. So if you have upfront capital, like we generated our own capital to build this office to make videos like this. So capital is definitely a leverage. Yeah. Uh, capital can also help you pay yourself in the initial stages of the business. And then we have code and then we have content. So these are the five types of leverages which people can completely use to mm. start a business. But anyway, so since this podcast is more about how to start a business and the mindset and the framework that people need to know while they are trying to start a business if they are already in a job. So that's what we are talking about here. Probably in the future podcast and depending on what questions that people have in the comments below this video, uh, we will start talking more about freelancing, agency, uh, training and coaching business and how to eventually scale all of them. One so, more thing I think yes. we should add, like if I were to summarize this entire thing in like four or five steps, like you are doing a job, first step, protect yourself so that you are getting paid for at least one to two years while doing a job and then start a business where you are not affected by the business fluctuation. Second is definitely like focus. Third, the big best business idea is basically to replicate what you're doing in this job across multiple industries and just scale it. Uh, having focus in that and growing it and focus on building SOPs, mm -hmm. clients results, case studies and hire more people so that they start doing the job. I think one more thing we should kind of highlight on is differentiating yourself in the business, the dip basically what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. So what I have observed, I'm not sure if it is written somewhere, so I can't mm. attribute it to any book. Mm. And this is something that I came out out of a thought mm. Mm. was like, there, is, there are only four ways to differentiate yourself. Mm. One is based on a service that you provide. Mm. Second is based on location. Mm. Third is based on price. Mm. Fourth is based on uh, uh, speed of the execution based on speed of execution is one of the leverage points amazing mm. and i might want one more mm. uh, model maybe based on model mm. Mm. so this is this came up uh, out of a discussion with uh, mm. pankaj uh, one mm. of our alpha club members mm. Mm. 
So when you are starting a business and mm. when people say, how do we differentiate ourselves mm. in this mm. particular field? Like, mm. okay, there are so many other players. How do I stand out? Mm. So one is based on a service. For example, Brian Moncada mm. He's like, everybody is a performance marketer. He's like, I'm a YouTube ads guy mm. for info coaching and high ticket coaching consulting yeah. business in the US, no, mm. not anywhere mm. else. Like, I don't know of any agency that does this. Yes. And he scaled it for seven figures mm. out of that. Based on a location, mm. what Jitendra did, like mm. digital marketing for restaurants. In Mumbai. In Mumbai. Mm. That's what is an issue. And he has yes. had so many mm. clients. Mm. Koteshwar Rao, healthcare marketing for clinics and hospitals. In Hyderabad. Hyderabad. Yes. So location mm. based thing. And mm. obviously you limit yourself to the location. Mm. Best thing is like, mm. uh, best scenario is you have the entire world for yeah. you. But to start with a single location is yes, more than enough. That becomes your niche. Interior designer scale, so this is a given. Like yes. if there is an interior designer in white field, it's very difficult to move to, let's say, Kormangla because they need execution team in Kormangla mm, as mm. well. So location-based differentiation is something. Third is price. And a lot of people, they fight on this. Ki, oh, we are the most cheapest guys in the world. And that's where it's the easiest thing to do. Mm. I mean, just reduce the price. Mm. You just need a decision. Mm. You don't need efforts. You don't need anything. You just need a, you need laziness and decision problems. Like, ah, come kar the price, people will buy. Mm. And mm. that's where people make mistake. But they really need to think about the rest, all the mm. others. Mm. Fourth that came out of that particular discussion was like the speed of execution. Mm. Let's say there is a video marketing agency, uh, two video marketing agencies. And in that particular case, let's say one video marketing agency says that, okay, you recorded this podcast, give mm. it to us, we'll edit mm. it. And we'll, it will take us 48 hours mm. to do it. Mm. And they charge, let's say, Know, five, ten thousand, whatever. Mm. Mm, there is one more marketing agency that comes mm. and they'll say, okay, you have same mm. quality, mm. good results, whatever. And they say, you give us the recording, mm. we'll edit it within six hours and give you. We'll 100% pay more money to that guy because yes. they're getting the result in six hours. Yes. And this is by far the most difficult thing to execute. Mm. Mm. I mean, if you are, let's say... I mean, say, Amazon is all about speed. Speed, right? Yes. And uh, how difficult is to execute like 10 mm. minutes delivery or let's say this, uh, this uh, one day delivery, yeah. all that. It requires heavy mm. operations. But we should also think about how fast to deliver these results. Yeah. If you come to Alpha Club, within three mm. months, you set yes. this thing and you yes. start getting ROIs and everything. That speed mm. is something that also differentiates mm. us in this mm. regard. Mm. Fifth is something that I feel is based on a model. And this is, I feel, the most difficult thing to do after speed, which is like creating your own business model because it takes a lot of experience over time. What is something that we are doing? Mm. Because a lot of other people, what I see, they promote this webinar. Webinar mm. is a model. Yeah. Somebody uh, pushed the webinar selling mm. system in India. Mm. Siddharth mm. did. Gopal did a workshop mm. system. He created a new model yes. out of it. Yes. People are doing high ticket nowadays. Mm. But what we are good in, good at is like, hey, how do you build that middle of the funnel so that you don't even need a good sales team? Yes. Basic sales, yes. do, tumara sale aa jai. how do you automate your trust building process and, and branding process? Branding process. And that is through email marketing, building your mm. personal branding. And we don't even have a BSL. Yes. We're just email, yes. hai paas, right? So that's the model. But that mm. model doesn't come mm. like that. Mm. It, it comes over a period of time by learning and doing things mm. over and over mm. again. Mm. See, the reason why we don't have a VSL is because mm. we know email just works, works for us. Yeah. And that confidence came after like 10 years mm. of yes. you So that is the it. model. That is yes. the model. Yes. So these are the five differentiating factors. And if mm. let's say somebody starts, wants to start a business from a job, if they can have one differentiating factor out of these five in their business, they will like stand out. Mm. Imagine mm. me providing uh, video marketing services to YouTubers mm. uh, and production and every kind of services to YouTubers in Bangalore so mm. that they can come to my office and I'll shoot, I'll edit. Mm. Uh, let's say price ko chhod do mm. and give results within six hours. Mm. And the way I do it is yeah. through XYZ model. Yes, yes. I think at this point, uh, for all the people who are thinking of quitting a job and starting a business, it might start to get overwhelming to yeah. think too much about business. <laughs> yeah. But yes, plenty to talk about. Uh, we will discuss that in the next podcast. Absolutely. And, uh, so yes, that's it, guys. So today in this podcast, we talked about how anybody who is in a job right now can quit their job and start a business. And we also discussed about... Uh, you know how you are going from a service to product spectrum it's not like black and white service or product i hope uh, the ideas that me and jayant discussed in this video uh, has been helpful so any final words jayant i mean yeah if you take action is, take action I mean, take action take action be focused be disciplined that's what it is yes yes yeah.
So thank you guys for watching this. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below, and we'll be making more videos like this with the new setup. Uh, I hope you are liking it. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Awesome. Bye-bye.